Oh, hi. I'm the heretic. Welcome, ladies, gents, and guardians of all ages. This is Azer. Sometimes it's fun to just take a step back and look at the infosphere of conventional opinion. See what happens when the kingdom of the blind rejects reality. Remind ourselves with great amusement and great horror that the lunatics run the insane asylum and they will stop at nothing to grab for power, even if that means redefining what words mean. So, how did we come across this article? Actually, I was the one to discover this gem while I was looking up the banned games list on Twitch. I kid you not, there's an actual game called Ethnic Cleansing. Because this game piqued my autistic curiosity, I simply typed in the game into Google search, and this was literally the first article that came up. <laughs> Life's crazy! The article was posted on Paste Magazine. Now, I've never heard of these guys. This article was simply brought to my attention because, let's be honest, it's really low-hanging fruit. But that's okay, because if we're going to live in the kingdom of a blind, we might as well laugh at their stumbling around, pretending to be able to see. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a wonderful thing. You know, if aliens were to come visit us and then proceed to read this article, they would tell us to stick it, flip it, and see you later, bye. Hit it! Trump has escalated his ethnic cleansing campaign and is now targeting American citizens. No, my title is not overly hyperbolic. America is indisputably undergoing a process of ethnic cleansing directed by the Trump administration. I consider myself well-versed on current events, and I had no idea Trump had an ethnic cleansing campaign. I have so many questions, like what brand of soap he's using to clean the ethnics with. Personally, I prefer the use of Irish Spring when I clean my ethnics. Just saying. So they start their argument by defying their terms. That's great. What you got? Ethnic cleansing, the attempt to create ethnically homogenous geographic areas through the deportation or forcible displacement of persons belonging to particular ethnic groups. Oh, so it's that kind of cleansing. That doesn't mention cleaning products at all, or mass murder through democide. Uh, anyways, let's go with it. So the allegation has to be that as a matter of policy, the Trump administration is trying to purify America so only white people live here. I mean, that's an extraordinary claim. And extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So tell me, how is the Trump administration cleansing the ethnics? How much would you like to bet that the author is only going to talk about the illegal immigrants and not, say, the naturally born citizens or those who came over illegally? Is there evidence that those people are being deported en masse? So what's going on is that people are being denied passport renewals for ambiguous reasons. This is what taking our country back looks like from a policy perspective. Yes, Bush and Obama enforce this policy too, but the report makes it clear that it has nowhere near the scale of what Trump is doing. Trump represents a huge chunk of Americans who believe that the only true way to be American is to be white. When they talk about immigrants taking over culture, they don't mean British immigrants, but anyone whose skin is too dark to be anointed white. This is ethnic cleansing. A certain type of person is deemed insufficiently American, and this twisted logic dictates that in order to preserve our American identity, America must cleanse itself of these supposed undesirables. Where's the proof? All we have are examples of alleged bureaucratic incompetence that are just that, incompetence. Now maybe their records raised red flags with the government, and their records are fraudulent. I have no proof one way or another. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter because all statist borders are nonsense. All the author has done was try to prove one allegation with another allegation. I mean, how do you know the policy is done in the name of racial antagonism? Do you have a crystal ball that can see into the hearts of bureaucrats and legislators? Of course the author doesn't. There's just a government policy he doesn't agree with. And rather than take the time to understand the reasons and motives behind certain policies, nope, straight to racism. Which is fine. I mean, I can expect a government worker to tell the truth as often as I expect to be able to draw a squared circle. But you should at least make your case as to why we should assume malevolence when there are other explanations. I like the fact that the author does not apply his own standards to the other presidents he mentioned. He just shifts the goalposts in order to paint Trump as a racist. So there goes any notion that the author actually cares about the lives of illegal immigrants. Why does this have to be a problem specific to Trump as opposed to borders as a whole anyway? Shouldn't we be more concerned about the ethics behind borders and why so many illegal immigrants come here in the first place? It also sounds like the author is talking about the ethnic cleansing of certain races, especially those with darker skin tones. So, 
But what about the Asians? Did we fool them to origami and send them back to Japan? I don't know. What these Trump supporters fail to understand is that whiteness is an ever-shifting construct. Whiteness exists solely to reinforce class barriers along sometimes amorphous racial lines, not to technically define ethnic groups. Swedish white people do not share the exact same culture as Italian whites. Wait a minute. If whiteness is an ever-changing construct, then what does that say about other races? What makes someone black? Mestizo? Asian? We've heard people go on about how gender is a social construct, so... Why don't these same people say the same thing about race? I, 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 I don't know, I just wanted to point that out. It's almost as if white people are a diverse group made up of dozens of ethnicities, cultures, and ideas. The alt-right will be happy to hear you conceding this point. I mean, I should argue this point, but it's a straw man argument. Nobody's contesting this except probably the SJW, so there's no reason to address it. The only reason it's in here is to present an impression that people he disagrees with are white supremacists by arguing as though the premise were true, though it's clearly not. There's plenty of reasons to disagree with Trump and his supporters on any number of issues, though race isn't one of them. The truth of the matter is that America has always been a country centered around a foundation of white supremacy. The most powerful country in the world was built on the graves of Native Americans and on the backs of slaves kidnapped from Africa and the Caribbean. Citation needed. Seriously, the only reason America even had slaves was because the government said, yes, it's completely legitimate for someone to own someone else. Wait, wait, hang on a second. If ethnic cleansing has always been the goal, why would you bring minorities into the country you're trying to racially purify, even if that means to enslave them? It doesn't make any sense at all. Speaking of, who do you think kidnapped the Africans? Because it wasn't the Americans. Oh, Right. It was black Muslims. No offense, but the author doesn't have the credibility to be telling us what the foundation of the United States is based on. I'm guessing he's one of those who thinks the three-fifths compromise was about blacks being three-fifths a person. Here's a hint. It wasn't! Did this author forget to mention how the Founding Fathers preached the idea that all men were created equal? While the country didn't initially grant everyone equal rights, Nevertheless, it's still a founding principle. Let's also not forget about how the Civil War left the South in ruins, where everything, including what the slaves built, were destroyed. So the idea that slaves built America holds about as much water as those thin napkins used as toilet paper in public restrooms. Only 2% of people in the South own slaves, anyhow, so... We fought a civil war that killed hundreds of thousands of Americans over the right to subjugate black people. Excuse me, it was fought over states' rights to subjugate black people. This malaise has never left us, and there has always been a significant chunk of the population who reject our founding ideal of all men are created equal, in favor of discriminating against those deemed to be insufficiently white at the time. Wait a minute, but you just said... The truth of the matter is that America has always been a country centered around a foundation of white supremacy. Either all men are created equal is the U.S.'s founding ideal, or the founding ideal is white supremacy. They can't both be true, so pick one! This isn't even in a different paragraph. Oh, so the author does acknowledge that principle. Spectacular, we have reached peak levels of inconsistency. I should also point out how not all the states wanted to secede on the basis of slavery as the author suggests. Although some of the states did include slavery as a reason to leave in the Union in their secession documents, states like Virginia, Arkansas, Missouri, and Kentucky simply opposed the Northern aggression. Interestingly, some of the states like Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee initially wanted to leave the Union based on slavery, but decided not to. They simply didn't find slavery a big enough issue or a big enough reason to leave the Union. So, can we just drop the idea that all southern states wanted to own slaves? A number of them didn't like that the North was forcing them to take sides in a war. Th that's it. Trump has set up child concentration camps with little to no oversight where sexual abuse is rampant in some shelters. Now, we are illegally detaining American citizens because they happen to be in an area with a lot of immigrants and citizens delivered by midwives because the cost of going to a hospital is too high, and because some real birth certificates are indistinguishable from fakes. Those who have the wrong skin color are now stuck under the boot of big government. Can we please stop comparing detainment centers as concentration camps? Unless our government starts to give them beds the size of dog houses, feed them watery soup made from ingredients that were on the verge of rotting, work their inmates to near death, experiment on them, and even kill them inside of gas chambers, don't ever compare the two. 
I might be opposed to government, but even I know these centers provide basic sanitation and even education. Granted, it's public education, but hell, it's miles better than what a concentration camp will ever provide. Hell, what the hell do concentration camps provide anyway? Death? Okay, so big government is really, really bad, you see. Using force to detain people because they might have fraudulent paperwork, or might have the wrong skin color, is really bad. Especially when the U.S. government separates children specifically to protect them from the sexual abuse rampant in these shelters. And because it's very hard to tell if adults accompanying the minors are actually their parents or child sex traffickers. But no, government force is really bad, you see. Until you use government force to demand people give up 30 to 40 percent of their property through taxation. Government force is used to stop people from smoking certain kinds of plants. Then government force is completely legitimate and justified. But if you dare touch the brown people, suddenly government force is completely wrong and illegitimate. People who apply one standard cannot be taken seriously when they seek to apply a different standard. Consistency is the name of the game, and this author isn't even pretending to form coherent arguments. I'm going out on a limb in saying that this author's grip on reality is on par with that of Sarah Palin. That's an insult to Sarah Palin. These policies, like the Muslim ban, are about cleansing America of certain ethnic minorities. Period. This is what Trumpism is all about. It's a backlash to modernity led by people whose lies are so sad and pathetic they wrap up their entire identity in an indescribable culture of whiteness. Okay, so it's only cleansing America of certain minorities. I'm glad we're clear on that there's no agenda for cleansing America of Asians or basketball Americans. Doesn't that make the so-called Trumpists the worst racial supremacists in world history? Certainly the most tolerant and accepting, which would mean y your entire argument is completely undermined by a single word, certain. Also, what Muslim ban? Oh, who am I kidding? Explaining himself is too much to ask. It wasn't a Muslim ban, it was just a temporary embargo on a few Middle Eastern countries, which were originally laid out by the Obama administration, so please stop calling it a ban. The rest of the article is of the same caliber, except invoking Godwin's law, and the government controlling borders is comparable to Nazi genocide. No, really. This is the kind of mealy-mouthed, sophistic, anti-logical doublethink you can expect. Now why so hysterical, you might ask? Why accuse opponents of being the evil, soul-sucking monsters he knows they aren't? I struggled with this question several years back when I was conservative, and things socialists and liberals did made no sense to me. Then it clicked. Everything they do is motivated by the acquisition of power. The moment you create an organization by which I can live at your expense, you're damn right you're going to do everything you can to grab that power for yourself. Because if you don't, I will use it against you. If you don't escalate, if you don't lie, deliberately misrepresent, slander, and defame me as a horrible monster, then I will do so to you. Just so I can live at your expense. This is the moral hazard having a government creates, and it's the basis for all political power. Now, how do I know the author lied in this article? Because the only people you can accuse of being racists and expect to gain anything in return from are not racist. If you go to a member of the National Socialist German Workers Party and accuse him of being a Nazi, he'll gladly admit he's a Nazi. If so-called Trumpists actually were racist, nobody would bother calling them that because that means they wouldn't be able to manipulate them through language. There are plenty of reasons to oppose government borders. They obstruct freedom of association, and the distinction between immigrant and illegal immigrant is entirely arbitrary. All the government is doing with these immigration policies is to try and fix problems that it caused. People feel like they should be paid a certain amount, minimum wage. But now there's an increase in poverty because people can no longer have the option to choose to work for under a minimum wage. So what do we do? Welfare programs. Oh, but now businesses are hiring illegal immigrants that are willing to work for less than minimum wage and are taking advantage of the state's welfare programs. Now what? And the border control. So, see how ridiculous this is. The only reason these language parasites, these linguicites, have any power 
is because there is an institution that rewards them for lying, for sophistry, for manipulating people's emotions into a frenzy, for redefining words like capitalism, profit, or ethnic cleansing, and using them as tools to gain more power, where opinions are backed with violence, and psychopaths can murder with impunity and be celebrated as heroes. This institution is called government, and as long as we have political power for people to grab a hold of, we will forever be cursed to share a world with demagogues. Uh, well, that, that was fun. Thank you for having me on, Filthy Heretic. Do you enjoy speedruns, commentaries on the gaming industry, and politics? Then come check out my channel. You can also come and watch me stream games on Twitch. The links will be down in the description. Questions? Comments? Critique? What would real ethnic cleansing in the U.S. look like? Could it ever happen in America? Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Support me through Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.